Um, the Bank of Tanzania, which is the central bank uh, for our country, um, has pioneered and championed uh, the cause of financial inclusion in Tanzania. Um, <clears throat> it has itself uh, adopted in its corporate uh, uh, strategy and corporate plan. Uh, one of the goals is promotion of uh, financial inclusion. Uh, we have a working group uh, across the institution involving different uh, departments, be it uh, bank supervision, payment systems, uh, research, all focused on uh, financial inclusion. Um, we are a member of AFI, partly exactly to draw more on uh, uh, knowledge so that we can uh, uh, enhance our functionality in terms of uh, financial inclusion uh, for Tanzania. So um, as a regulator, um, as uh, a promoter of financial sector development in the country, we have taken a, a leading role. Uh, but now we want to broaden uh, not just uh, the involvement of others, uh, but also the participation uh, of stakeholders beyond the government. Well, um, Tanzania is a very large country in relation to the size of its population. So we have a very low population, <coughs> sorry, uh, population density. Um, and as such, uh, space has become a major obstacle of using the traditional ways uh, of brick and mortar branches, ATMs, to reach the majority. Uh, of the population. Um, so uh, we have had to think of ways uh, of bridging that geographical uh, challenge um, and we have chosen uh, and for a good reason a mobile uh, payment system as uh, a way of uh, cost effectively reaching the uh, majority of the population in the country um, and also as um, a way uh, of making sure that we meet our ambitious targets uh, in terms of rolling out financial inclusion. Well, um, for most of them, um, it is partly the fact that um, they don't have collateral um, uh, in order to uh, get loans from uh, commercial banks. Um, it has also been partly a problem of uh, um, just business management in terms of uh, entrepreneurial capacity. Um, but all of these now are being uh, addressed uh, partly by having specific, special schemes um, that would reduce uh, the risk profile of SME borrowers. So, for example, we ourselves as a central bank, uh, an agent uh, for the government to run a guarantee scheme uh, for um, uh, SMEs, which have, that scheme has uh, helped to reduce the risk uh, uh, that banks see in SMEs because um, typically uh, we share the risk 50-50 uh, in terms of uh, half of the risk the central bank uh, uh, on behalf of the government is underwriting and the commercial bank uh, picks only the other half. So this is one way in which this is done. And also there have been now a number of other schemes uh, partly supported by international organizations so other uh, individual um, non-profit uh, organizations uh, again uh, to help uh, SMEs uh, you know borrow 
without having to um, really meet all the, uh, the typical risk uh, assessment uh, challenges that uh, uh, they have. Well, um, first, uh, we, we have had a whole range of individual uh, initiatives uh, aimed at uh, addressing financial inclusion. Uh, microfinance, uh, institutional development, and reach. Uh, we have had, uh, of course, the focus on mobile payment uh, as a platform for delivering a variety of uh, uh, financial services. Um, so we thought this is uh, now a point in time we should uh, have a much more coordinated uh, framework. So we are developing a national strategy uh, with uh, a wide range of stakeholders. Um, this includes regulators, uh, it includes uh, telcos, other private sector participants, banks, microfinance institutions all around the table in order to draw up an action plan and monitorable in, uh, program for implementation. But uh, there are three areas we want to focus on in particular given our ambitious target to roll out uh, financial uh, inclusion or reduce financial exclusion. One is um, to go beyond uh, purely uh, payment services using mobile uh, phone technology to introduce uh, agent banking. Uh, we have already issued guidelines. Um, we are already issuing licenses uh, or approvals uh, to commercial banks to start uh, uh, making use of uh, uh, second, um, broadening the range of products uh, that uh, the, can be used on the platform, including uh, uh, now um, uh, instituting or allowing banks to have uh, savings uh, accounts operated via uh, that platform. Um, also, uh, to uh, provide for small credit um, uh, products uh, also to be offered uh, through um, that uh, particular platform. And finally, uh, the point of sale, uh, uh, um, uh, outlets across all stores and uh, a wide range of other services. Uh, already taxes are being paid using mobile um, uh, payment system and uh, insurance products are also being offered. So we are going to focus also on broadening the range of products uh, uh, in order to make sure that uh, a wider range of population uh, is actually reached and served. For the SMEs, um, I think um, uh, it will be along uh, three br broad sort of uh, 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 strategies. One would be, um, uh, as, as I said, to uh, broaden uh, the range of products uh, for them, uh, which would uh, reduce uh, their risk profile. Um, so whether it's guarantee schemes or special schemes uh, for SMEs uh, to borrow. Uh, two, um, really to uh, introduce lease finance uh, for SMEs. You know, that's uh, self-collateralizing, so they can get equipment, uh, uh, which the asset itself becomes also collateral, and all they have to do is to make sure that uh, um, their activity generates enough revenue to be able to repay uh, the, the, the scheme. Uh, third, um, I think is um, uh, almost like an extension service uh, for um, uh, SMEs, 
to sharpen their skills, build their capacities, uh, because uh, ultimately, as um, commercial entities, once they know how to run their businesses well, uh, they become uh, much more viable ventures. Um, one is uh, that we will have a much more focused and uh, coordinated uh, 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 approach to implementing uh, uh, the various uh, actions needed to reach the, uh, the target. Two is um, to promote the awareness uh, and the drive, uh, in this case amongst all the stakeholders. Uh, and uh, make it that um, they are part of uh, the drive to make sure that uh, we reach the 50% uh, uh, financial inclusion target uh, we have set for ourselves by 2015. And um, finally, um, just to make sure that uh, the policy side uh, uh, is supportive uh, of all the uh, actions that uh, the individual players, including banks, uh, microfinance institutions, and, and others, including telcos, uh, uh, are actually uh, aiming in terms of uh, action uh, and therefore uh, policy regulation not to be a bottleneck uh, or stand in the way of their achievements. Well, um, I think for SMEs, um, uh, part of uh, their outreach in terms of uh, the range of population they serve, uh, as well as uh, being an, an income generating component for the bulk of uh, uh, the non-formal part of uh, uh, population, uh, th their contact in terms of modernization of the production process, businesses, I think would also bring those uh, into the, the financial uh, uh, services side. Uh, they need a wide range of uh, financial services and their clients can be reached also by them. Because SMEs and informal sector accounts for a very large proportion actually of uh, uh, incomes being earned uh, by the majority of Tanzanians. And once uh, you reach that majority and you modernize their financial uh, services, you also uh, roll out financial inclusion. Um, in three big ways. One is peer learning. Uh, knowledge, uh, we have been able to um, actually um, uh, benefit a lot from exchanges. Um, with, for example, for agent banking, we uh, have been to uh, Latin America, Brazil, and uh, we have been to Kenya. We have also had other visits in Asia, including in Philippines, uh, to learn. Um, likewise, we subjected our own uh, regulations, draft regulations to uh, peer review um, uh, so that we get the best uh, possible uh, advice before issuing. Um, AFI uh, also has offered uh, um, the framework for peer pressure for us. We see others doing well. Uh, we definitely get challenged and we want to emulate and we have uh, uh, also through declarations and making public commitment like in Maya also meant that uh, we have got uh, to deliver on this. And the third and big way is uh, support for capacity building, um, both by uh, being part of the knowledge groups uh, uh, and our people uh, getting involved 
in data and others getting the skills uh, and also um, uh, profited uh, or benefited a lot from the AFI grants uh, in terms of capacity building. Well, um, uh, I think uh, AFI uh, is growing. Um, it is important, it looks at uh, ways in which it can remain as effective when it is much bigger. And one way in which uh, uh, I think it has started doing very well in terms of that is having these uh, regional uh, policy initiatives, like the one that was just set up uh, uh, in Africa on uh, Africa Mobile Payment Initiative. Um, uh, it has created a channel of uh, sharing knowledge uh, through our own set of institutions. So still connected to AFI, we get the knowledge uh, from the rest of the world, but uh, we have set up uh, points of uh, distribution of that uh, uh, information amongst ourselves. And that way, AFI can more effectively uh, reach a much larger um, you know, set of uh, beneficiaries uh, through that type of uh, uh, arrangement. So I think that's uh, an important development. Yeah.